अरे भैया दरिया की तो इतनी कहानियां हैं अगर आज उसका व्याख्यान करेंगे तो अगले 80 साल तक बोल सकते हैं What's up you guys welcome back to the channel it's been a while since we've done a good amount of maritime work on this channel and i know i haven't gone back to sea yet but we all know the state of the pandemic and it's been a tough time for indians absolutely everywhere you guys but don't worry we have a really really special video for you guys today now over the last 2 years it's been a really really hard time specifically indian seafarers because traveling signing on the ship signing off the ship has been extremely hard and also because indians have had so many restrictions put on them in various countries for travel we have had a tough time with getting jobs irrespective of being frontline or key workers in getting vaccines in this country so in today's video i have somebody really special who's going to break down the state of the indian seafarers and he's also going to break down the future of indian seafarers for you guys i get a lot of questions on this channel about whether the merchant navy is a good industry to join whether it's a good career whether it's going to be a good profession and whether there're going to be jobs available in the future for indian today we're going to break down all of those questions for you and i'm not going to be the one who's going to do it we have a really special guest who's going to answer all of your questions now the person that we're talking about today captain sanjay prasher who we all know as the freedom fighter for the maritime industry he was the man behind the largest airlift and rescue of seafarers in 2020 when a large number of us especially indian seafarers were stuck at sea way beyond our contracts so he was the man and the force behind that rescue drive he is also the man who is currently fighting to implement seafarer vaccinations and to give seafarers walk-ins as we are essential key workers we are frontliners in this country his twitter account is flooded with a lot of questions and a lot of comments by seafarers all over the nation and that's why i figured he's the best person to talk to. Now Captain Prasher is not only advocate for the maritime industry he is also the member of the National Shipping Board which is the highest committee in this country which basically works towards the future of the maritime industry and it's also the highest advisory committee in this country that works for seafarers. If you're an Indian seafarer you already know who Captain Prasher is. He's also the man who always gives you all the information that you need regarding sign offs and grievances without wasting any further time. We're going to jump into this interview that I had with him off late. I hope you enjoy it. Let's not waste any time. Let's get into it. Okay sir welcome to the channel this video is for seafarers and boss all indian seafarers hum aapko jante hain as one person who we can go up to whenever we have any doubts everyone always rushes to your twitter account we have always known you as somebody who can give us answers of course aajkal dg shipping ki wajah se we have lots of information on the internet and dg shipping also is taking initiatives to promulgate circulars and information but kabhi kabhar wo samajh mein nahi aata we don't understand whatever is written because of the kind of english and there are a lot of young seafarers who can misinterpret things so we always come to you video is mainly for them sir i understand and you're an ex seafarer and now you're working alongside the government so everyone knows you're a part of a lot of different avenues with respect to the maritime industry so what i would like to know sir is uh, what made you start your journey as somebody who takes up causes for the safeguarding of seafarers and promulgating the welfare of seafarers in india uh, namaskar firstly i thank you for uh, being one of the you know young guys and you are an expert uh, yourself and last time i saw your video with your dad so you are a second generation thank you sir and uh, thank you for uh, bringing me uh, on record to say few things to our seafarers thank you for coming sir padte the and uh, we saw we, uh, one of our friend you know anil arora right now he is working for executive ship management in singapore right sir he had another uh, uh, one of his uh, mother's colleague who was teaching in air force school ambala kand and they told us about merchant navy priyan brothers from ambala so they guided us then we went to district library saw the newspapers okay appointments column ek section hota hai usme we saw the advertisements there han ji that time merchant navy act of 1989 and wow. we we cut that particular advertisement we applied went to mumbai got selected right sir and uh, then kind of my journey from ts rahman uh, seventh batch went on the ship damodar bal carriers okay एंड uh, जैसा होता है एक मिडिल क्लास फैमिली में भैया जहाँ लकीर के फकीर बन के जो लकीर मिल जाए बस उसको पकड़ के आगे बढ़ते रहो हाँ तो बस अपना सेकंड मेड दिया फिर उसका जो मेड दिया एक बार फेल हो गए फिर पास हो गए मास्टर्स दिया ओरल्स में लड़क गए फिर पास हो गए <laughs> बस ऐसे करते करते लगे रहे और अपना मिथ्स हुई उसके लाइन में कमांड मिल गई फिर शादी हो गई उसके बाद ऑफिस ज्वाइन कर लिया तब बॉम्बे में घर खरीदा तो ज्यादातर सीमेन लोगों को मैं यही बोलूंगा भैया शादी से पहले घर खरीदना मेरी किस्मत अच्छी थी कि अच्छी बीवी मिली चलो शादी के बाद घर ले लिया अदरवाइज सारे पैसे रिश्तेदारों में 
ऊपर मार देते हैं एंड एंड दुनिया के बयासी देश घूम के पांच सौ से ज्यादा बंदर का देख लिए घाट घाट का पानी पी लिया चाहे अस्सी घाट गंगा जी का हो चाहे दुनिया के घाट हो तो वी हैव बीन building a following it's if you look at any of the information you put out it's purely with respect to education and guidance so what made you take up this course sir i follow my seafarers and uh, if anybody follows me that's fine but basically i follow seafarers right. and when you follow seafarers you understand that for one job there are 100 applicants and uh, to do one particular job with dg or mmp sometimes seafar gets stuck Hanji. and uh, being a national shipping board member and dealing with dg shipping for quite some time yes. i have found that you know it's uh, it's uh, how you put across your things and how you communicate is very important right sir. and you should know the right channels and right channels of course dg shipping right emails and right offices you should be able to correspond but yeah like ke bas mein nahi hota hai kai bar ye thoda bahut mujhe lagta hai 90% seafarers khud kar lete hain jo 10% upar niche hote hain unka haath pakad ke unko at least jo difficulties hoti hain wo paar karwa dete hain right yahan tak madad karne ki baat hai i think it comes uh, uh, humanity exists you know because yes, yes. by birth we, are, we have a helping nature in any field you go whether it is a farmer whether whether, whether it is a seafarer whether it is whether he or she is a soldier or astronaut right. or scientist i think uh, hand in hand wo sathi hath badana it's it's that kind of a culture you know That's and especially true. in our religion sanatan dharm we are actually born and brought up like that so when i was uh, at sea i remember one of the second cook his daughter was getting married and he was running short of money he asked me 2600 dollars i was uh, that time newly pr- promoted uh, second mate so i i gave him the money you know Right. and uh, he returned after i think uh, one one and a half years he was from goa i never met him in my life i gave him the bank account details so i think seafarer is helping seafarers on the ship is very much happening it's just that when i stepped ashore i thought i must continue the same culture so i'm just continuing what i learned on the ship and what my seniors did right. with us they helped me it's pretty simple that way it's really nice to hear also about your experiences at sea sir if you have anything special that you have experienced while you were out at sea and you want to share with a lot of young seafarers i was a lot younger as a cadet and i used to keep talking to my father and his friends who were also sailing and there's so many stories and shipping has changed over time so if there's something you like to share something more any other stories are bhaiya darya ki to itni kahaniyan hai agar aaj uska vyakhan karenge to agle 80 saal tak bol sakte hain that is a experience we have lived with yes of and course. i'm sure hundreds of seafarers have millions of stories with them of course. and they all make you smile yes. i remember when i was uh, uh, you know a chief mate and uh, in israel next dot we were discharging the cargo and grab hit the tank top oh. and uh, tank top ruptured सो एज यूजल आई थॉट आई एम द स्मार्टेस्ट चीज और हम तो जाते होते हैं हमको लगता है दुनिया में हमसे होशियार कोई नहीं है तो हमें भी यही लगता था और <laughs> ये तो बाद में कुछ गलत फहमी हमारी दूर है हमें पता लगा नहीं हमसे भी अच्छे लोग हैं <laughs> और कैप्टन घनश्याम बास कर दिया इट वॉज मिस के लाइन केप साइज बल्कर एंड आई वेंट एंड आई जस्ट टुक आउट द प्लान हमारे यहाँ शिप पे होते हैं कैपेसिटी प्लान है शिप्स के कई कई प्लान होते हैं जनरल अरेंजमेंट प्लान है तो मैंने उसमें से निकाला टैंक टॉप की जो स्टील प्लेट है किस टाइप की होनी चाहिए क्या थिकनेस होनी चाहिए तो मैंने उसको फटाफट बोलकर मैंने लगवा दिया वेल्डिंग वेल्डिंग करवा दी क्लास को बुलाया क्लास ने रिजेक्ट कर दिया ये कहकर कि बॉस दिस शुड हैव बीन 16 एमएम एंड यू हैव पुट अ थिकनेस ऑफ 10 एमएम तो मैंने बोला ओ हाउ हाउ कम आई डिड सी 16 एमएम बिकॉज़ आई वाज प्रीटी श्योर ऑफ 10 एमएम राइट सर बट ऑफ कोर्स इट वाज 16 एमएम एंड द कंडीशन ऑफ क्लास वाज गिवन सो यू हैव टू सेंड अ मैसेज टू द टू द चार्टर्स एंड यू हैव टू सेंड अ मैसेज टू द कंपनी राइट एंड आई टेल यू इट्स इट्स नॉट अ गुड फीलिंग टू सेंड टू द कंपनी यू नो एंड आई आई स्टिल रिमेंबर कैप्टन घनश्याम बास्कर दे वाज सेंट अप मैसेज ही ड्रॉप आई ड्रॉप्ड द ईमेल फॉर हिम एंड ये जैसा ठीक है आप में कोई बात नहीं दोबारा कर लेंगे अब आप जाओ यू गो ऑन द डेक एंड आई वाज वेरी डीमोरलाइज्ड बिकॉज़ प्रमोशन का समय था हमें लगता था बॉस इधर-उधर कुछ हो गया तो प्रमोशन ही नहीं मिलनी जी एंड ही रोड द ईमेल दैट एज एज मास्टर आई फेल्ड टू गाइड माय ऑफिसर दैट द दैट द स्टील प्लेट शुड बी 16 एमएम राइट एंड इट वाज माय मिस्टेक आई डिडंट रीड द प्लान केयरफुली एंड वी पुट 10 एमएम एंड देयर इज अ कंडीशन ऑफ क्लास गिवन आई एम सॉरी एंड ओके देन ही गिव मी अ कॉपी ऑफ मैसेज नेक्स्ट डे मॉर्निंग तो हमने तो यही सीखा है कि जब कोई कुछ गलत होता है तो जो सरदार होता है उस समय द वन हुज हेडिंग इट द वन हुज कमांडिंग इट ही सेज आई एम रॉन्ग एब्सोल्युटली एंड थाउजेंड्स ऑफ स्टोरीज हमारे जो कैडेट भी थे कई बार मैं क्या करता था अपने कैडेट्स आते थे उनका एक हमारा कैडेट था बड़ा मोटा कैडेट आया जा हां जी और मैं चीवा सर था हां जी कोई बड़ा धुरंधर कैडेट था तो हमने सबसे पहले वेइंग मशीन लगी मतलब भैया बेटा वेट करो वेट किया उसने अपना 80 केजी तो मैंने उसके उसमें बुक में लिख दिया 65 केजी एंड मैंने बोला 3 महीने बाद ये वेट होगा 
कोई बात नहीं दो महीने में हो गया आपने काम ही इतना ज्यादा लिया उससे तो पार्टी ऑन बॉडी वॉज वेरी हैप्पी थी सर एस गॉन तो लेकिन ट्रेनिंग इंस्टीट्यूट का 
train 500 people and then there are jobs only for five seafarers, you know. Right. And if uh, the, there are five jobs, seafarers should know. And if still somebody wants to take a chance, of course, it's, it's his or her outlook. Right. But the right data should be available to the common man in villages, not English data on website. Yes. In Hindi, the Satra-Mari constitutional language, they should know those things to the that's my opinion and we're working on it. At least at my level I'm working on it. I'm sure many other people are there like me you know, who are working on this. I'm sure, sir. I'm sure. I have noticed all the work that you've been putting in and that's how I actually found you. I was actually one of the seafarers who was out at sea for a prolonged period of time last year. And uh, that was because I was sailing in Asia. I had even spoken to you at that point. You had advised that in Asia, most Asian countries were shut for crew change. So I was out for 11 months and I was following the entire scenario for seafarers. I had a lot of friends who stayed even longer at sea. And I do remember that you were one of the few people who actually helped with repatriation of seafarers at that point. That was the largest airlift for seafarers in the world i think in history that was one of the biggest initiatives ever that it it's really surprising that we had one man who was standing behind most of that and i know it was again a team effort but you were the forefront you were the midpoint where everyone could communicate with you and give you their grievances at that point so i do remember that and i do respect that thank you so much uh, i appreciate uh, you doing 11 months and i appreciate every seafarer who went beyond the call of the duty Absolutely. because and uh, also those seafarers who could sustain themselves by staying more than one year unemployed at home Absolutely. just because they they knew that there will be a better tomorrow for them yes and when it came to the question of uh, having flights, uh, Himachal Seafarer Association, right. uh, during uh, one of the conversations, web-based webinars with the Honorable Minister of State for uh, Port Shipping and Waterways, Sri Mansur Mandavi Ajivya, he declared that, you know, seafarers will be allowed to have special flights and uh, right. companies can ask permission for it. SOP was drafted. I was part of that uh, particular team I remember which this. drafted the SOP. And I was pretty happy that, you know, I could apply for the permission. I thought, okay, we'll apply because there was one ship we had to take over in Japan. So I thought, okay, we'll plane charter karenge, yes. Ab, humne kabhi you had no choice, you know, I, it's, it's do or die, you know. Right. And I thought even if one job is saved, I'll still do it. And when we applied for the permission, it took some time because bureaucratic wrangles are always there, you know, the trust factor takes a little bit of time to come out right. in, in open that yes, we do trust each other. But right. then after that, of course, we did more than 125 sorties and, you know, moving 19,000 seafarers. And I, I salute uh, Doha, you know, the government uh, because uh, for the simple reason that not only we did Qatar, Airways, right. they even put their um, uh, you know uh, first class uh, launch service for uh, seafarers. Indian right. seafarers benefited quite a lot there. I remember that. And uh, Indian embassies worked overnight. It was of course a huggling task. But we did it because we didn't have to do it. And the day we thought we didn't have to do it, we didn't have to do it. It was our normal work. And in that case, 1700 people were brought back to India who were Indians, non-seafarers and who were poor people stuck and stranded. A couple of them released from the jails and all that. We brought them back, put them into a hotel for, five, right, for uh, 14 days and then send them back home. So we absorbed all those costs. And I was pretty clear, you That's know, amazing. it's a basically biological warfare which is happening and Indian, every Indian is a soldier here. Yes. And I'm so happy that every seafarer stood the ground and uh, Absolutely. and even we seafarers sure could uh, assist them. Absolutely, sir. It's it's been it's been fantastic to actually see how things were carried out last year. It was there was a point where we started uh, exceeding our contracts and our companies were trying their best, but we didn't see anything that could happen until we saw your airlifting drive that took place worldwide. It was it, I think it's world famous at this point, sir. So again, I would personally yeah, as night a seafarer. Night eleven o'clock. Uh, night eleven o'clock. I called up one day Honorable Minister of uh, State for Port Shipping and Waterways, Sri Mansur Mandavi Ji. Right. I said, sir, our visa is coming at four o'clock. We have permission to leave. Our two men are coming. I said, sir, this is not possible. Airport and then we are, we are stuck and you know we, we need your help right and of course he was very kind you know we got the permission by I think one o'clock or something and then of course the flight took off about bit hour, one hour late or something but then look at the look at the speed with which you were working and look at the support Absolutely. what uh, we got from the minister himself you know Absolutely. I think that freedom to give a call to the honorable minister night uh, 11 o'clock not many seafarers know but that's how India is changing and India is I was just going to say that uh, it's really surprising that you got this much support from the government and such such immediate support which is fantastic i think uh, as seafarers we do hear about things that dg shipping is doing things and we do hear about the government making efforts but then again it takes time for the information to reach us there are so many different outlets on the internet so not always your information that you receive is accurate and uh, that's exactly why i want to sit down with you and have a conversation with you about these things because you know both sides you see two sides of the coin you talk to indian seafarers and you associate yourself with the government and you work with them so it's fantastic but sir uh, bringing me back to seafarers this year the pandemic has put us on a back foot and 
uh, I do believe a lot of seafarers have lost jobs. Indian seafarers are being called frontliners and key workers by DG Shipping. There are articles which I will be putting up in this video for young seafarers to see. But there are a lot of seafarers or a lot of future seafarers, people who want to join the Merchant Navy who are concerned about the availability of jobs and uh, especially vaccines for seafarers at the moment. So if there's anything you'd like to add on that. Yeah, vaccine for seafarers, Kerala government and Tamil Nadu government have been on the forefront. They have declared the seafarers frontline workers. As far as the Machal government is concerned, despite our, our representation, two notices they have taken out and they have even given priority to NCC cadets right. and even to jails and prisoners. And I don't understand why they have not given it to the seafarers. So yes, there has been disappointment, you know, with so many states and only two states acknowledging. Absolutely. And central government uh, having declared Ministry of Shipping, having declared we are frontline workers. But I think it's more or less of a lip service by the government because practically on the ground we are not seeing vaccination being uh, yes. prioritized for the seafarers. Yes. There's a shortage of vaccine uh, probably you know there was I should say because 12 seaports were asked to give a vaccine on priority to seafarers. Exactly. And I'm uh, glad that uh, now it has picked up. Now every seafarer is able to move on in that direction. Okay. Now companies have come totally hands-on with the mass vaccine drive. Right. And uh, I was a bit pessimistic about uh, 10 days back but with executive ship management Mr. B.S. Tika doing it right across to all his uh, seafarers right. and that too with single dose it's a different then it is a different one as compared to the one which government is doing right. anglo eastern coming out in full yes. strength synergy coming out in full strength we as vr maritime services we have done already 50 percent of our seafarers okay. uh, vaccine you know and uh, i think uh, uh, now i'm pretty optimistic that by 15th august or by 31st august you know i i would see that 90 percent of the only seafarers who are active seafarers when i say active means at least you have done three ships right and you have your watch keeping as rating or uh, two by four or two or three by four right. as officer you have your so it's not about just cadets and tmes Absolutely. you know there of course the vacancies are pretty less people are higher number yes but uh by september i see 100 percent in order okay. and uh, indians are good so they will bounce back okay yes there's been a small uh one two month lapse where other nationalities have taken up more jobs and indians have been replaced yes on let's say about very close to five thousand to six thousand jobs yes. so but uh, i'm pretty sure by august or by uh, september we will see a change and by next year uh, february will be right on the track right. so okay. we, we at we see parents out at sea we know how to secure jobs absolutely and we will absolutely i'm sure i'm sure we will sir i'm looking to go back soon too and uh, definitely if i have to stay another 11 months for the industry i would do that there's no doubt about it so you mentioned that there are uh, 12 seaports in india which dg shipping has put out a circular for stating that they have to vaccinate indian seafarers on priority i do see that mumbai port is one of them but uh, i'm not 100 percent sure if all of these ports are giving vaccinations at the moment you already mentioned there is a shortage or there was a shortage of vaccinations of late and are you aware of which of these 12 ports are giving vaccinations other than tamil Nadu and Kerala states in general? Uh, on all 12 ports are giving vaccination now and okay. I think Vizag is one of the best as far as I get the feedback. Every seafarer goes there with a copy of uh, COC and with a company letter and all that. Okay. So, Vizag is right now leading the front, you know. There seems to be a political will also probably from the local MP who is pursuing this because there are a lot of seafarers from Vizag. Okay. And uh, as far as the other ports are concerned, I think uh, 50 to 70 vaccinations are being done for seafarers in every port. Okay. And I, I would like to mention about Himachal Pradesh. And okay. I wrote to the DC Congress as well as to the deputy commissioner una these are the two districts out of the 12 okay and uh, they are probably in uh, now the lot of uh, hospitals we are uh, able to showcase that we have a job at stake and we are able to get the vaccine okay but the, the other point point is the second dose where the duration is pretty high now so i think uh, there is a lot of discussion happening and i think as the number of vaccines uh, doses uh, as the number of vaccine uh, i need to say uh, consignment is concerned as that volume is increasing probably you know the government will again review the time duration what is required with the two vaccines okay it's the same, same same vaccine which is given you twice right so i think we have lost time no doubt about that yeah but right now we are gaining the momentum okay that's fantastic to hear sir so then it's really really good to know that all 12 seaports are currently providing vaccines and Vizag is the headliner for all of this but sir i have another question i keep getting asked by a lot of younger cadets nowadays who say you have to register on dg shipping's website and also register on the coven app and is that the procedure to go to mumbai port trust for example if you have a young seafarer in bombay who wants a vaccine or any answer to every sea I, I would go one step forward i think dg shipping should have a data that uh, you cannot do your e-migrate probably after 31st august or you know, or you need a waiver for that. We should know how many seafarers have got vaccinated and how many not. And that should be from DG Shipping website. Right. Because uh, when you have to talk about employment, I think vaccine is pretty important. Yes, you have to register if you are going to uh, Mumbai Port Trust. 
or others other port trusts okay. and i see no no harm in doing that no absolutely and it's not a big job it's a pretty simple job you yes, know yes. with online yes some people may have some problems of going doing all this from his their mobile phone because internet bhi har ek jagah available nahi and it should be more of app based yes. which is not the case with dg shipping so that is a disappointment that after so many years also dg shipping is not on app you know they should go as per the latest technology i agree um having said that i i would also say that hamare uh, seafarers bhi koi kam nahi hai kai baar wo sea time manipulation aur ye sab mein itna mushkil kar dete hain ki dg shipping has to come out with lot of checks and balances on their okay. e governance kind of a program yes and uh, i would also say that there are you know there are uh, lot of legitimate entries but then couple of illegitimate entries cause lot of disturbance for others so i don't think it is just the seafarer some people in the system also need to have some checks and balances through the system makes perfect sense sir so also with respect to the vaccines there are a number of vaccines available in india we have covid shield co vaccine sputnik sputnik's not really available widely at the moment but it's here in india already but there was some talk about co vaccine not being approved by who so will that cause any trouble cuz i mean yes if you go to the mumbai port you go to another 12 designated hospitals or if you get vaccinated from a company they are all prioritizing covid shield but if there's a seafarer who's unable to get the vaccines in that procedure and they have available co vaccine shots in uh, hospitals close by would it make a difference to them if they took a covaxin shot yes i think it will make a difference if the if uh, let's say i'm just giving an example let's say thailand is not accepting or you do, do the sign on at bangkok right. but then look at the other side i think the future lies that at the airport there will be a counter to get vaccinated and uh, to travel you know okay or there will be a counter at the seaport so i think uh, this vaccination will become something like yellow fever okay. where we we would get vaccine and then it is valid for 10 years and all that right. so i think there is nothing much to worry right now if any country is going to say we accept only following vaccines then of course they are going to uh, give it at airport because you are entering that country right. and you may be a carrier of a particular pandemic uh, virus right so mera to ye manna hai ki isme zyada ghabrane ki baat nahi hai on the employers uh, who is going to employ you what they want and i think employers themselves are competent you know and good employers always take of care of their seafarers they will go ahead with the, even a uh, lot of companies are actually paying the cost all the seafarer yes. can himself pay you know 800 uh, 1000 or 2000 rupees or yes. 10 dollars 20 dollars but then they are not doing that you know they say okay we will we'll bear the cost right so i think it is it is uh, up to the employer first to decide what he wants and it is up to the employer to guide the seafarers who are employed with them right rather than leaving the seafarer at large to find the information on himself and Himself. Right, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, so basically, co-vaccine should may be a problem, may not be a problem. But uh, what is your final advice in simple words? Should seafarers take co-vaccine or not? Matlab, when, when in doubt, don't do it. You know, if it is okay. yes or no, or maybe yes or maybe no, it's. the form no from my side okay i i am of that opinion perfect sir also now i'm just giving you me as an example right now say if i have to join a ship next month i've got my first shot of covid shield i can travel with one shot or do i need to stay in india for 12 to 14 weeks to get a second shot if the company is allowing if there is no issue like certain countries like korea at the moment have a system where you can just go there quarantine you don't need a vaccine to enter that country you quarantine for 14 days in korea and it's just a simple example what if that is the scenario should a seafarer travel at that point or should they do they have to wait for their second shot like what is what do they do sabse mushkil question hai ye it is like orals being conducted and you know your pass and fail depends upon this you know <laughs> i think it's the most difficult one for me to answer right, but sir. if i am given choice yes to take first shot and out at sea yes as far as i am concerned i will do it okay i will go out at with the single shot and then uh, i think uh, for me the job is equally important and i'm pretty sure that employers and the other countries have thought about it before they put me on the ship and as far as i am concerned i am also sure that you know i can take one shot vaccine which will be available right. in that particular country right so it it can get complicated. okay fair enough take that i will also go out to see with one shot so i have no problem with that sir uh, also dg shipping i see in the last uh, year year and a half has been very forthcoming towards indian seafarers they have given extensions on cocs and cdcs and stcw uh, refresher training has now come online which again you were on the forefront of with helping seafarers get their photo verification done and their signature verification we've all seen your videos so yeah they've definitely been on the forefront with respect to all of these things but uh, a couple of seafarers were asking me questions regarding the competence the exams they've been postponed are there any dates on when they'll be re- restarted yet again like chief mate written exams or chief engineer written exams masters exams they've been postponed ever since the month of april as far as i understand so is there any inclination any information you can give on that honestly i must say that indian uh, dg shipping has been a leader in in the uh, worldwide you know Absolutely. they are the one who first came out with sops for the crew change in port they came out with sops see for us to travel by here and others copied us yes uh, let me be blunt here So all credit to DG Shipping. That's good to know, sir. Yes, the feedback from the industry matters, and I think what you are particularly uh, mentioning now about exams and all that, 
I think it has been a year of disaster, not only for maritime field, for even my son who's studying in 10th class, 12th class. We know exactly that examinations are not happening. Absolutely, it's it's a practical thing what what we are all suffering from. Yes, the future lies with online examination system which DG has approved, but somehow it is not uh, implemented so much on the nautical side. Right, what has been implemented on engineering side, online orals. They say it is happening, but again, it is not happening on the nautical side. It is happening on the engineering side. It's been happening on the engineering side for quite some time. Yes, there is some reluctance in some surveyors. And I think, despite all the technological advancement, एक ही दफ्तर में दो कानून नहीं होने चाहिए। तो ये हमारी विडंबना है सीफेरस की कि हम ऐसी जगह पर हैं कि अगर आप इंजीनियर हो तो आपकी ट्रीटमेंट अलग है, डेक ऑफिसर हो तो आपकी ट्रीटमेंट अलग है। And I request DG Shipping through your channel also. At least the nautical side should have the same parameters. The way they declare results is also totally separate. Yes. How many attempts you have failed in orals is mentioned uh, in the engineering side. It is not mentioned in the deck side. You know the orals results are not mentioned in the nautical side. Mm-hmm. They are mentioned in the engineering side. Right. So I think standardization has to happen. As far as exams are concerned, I I must admit to my seniors, I am as confused as you are because I think the situation right now says that there may be no examination in the month of June. Right. But probably from July yeah, we should be a little bit back to normal. Okay. But how much back to normal depends. What is the condition? Those uh, states where the examinations are held. Right. It is time for DG Shipping to have some additional examination centers, like one in Chandigarh at least. Okay. Because uh, there is heavy, heavy rush for the examination in Delhi. In Delhi. And yes. the people are coming from all over uh, North India, and then you know you you got maximum nautical site uh, happening from North India and uh, 32 south from North India. So it makes sense to have one separate examination center in Chandigarh. Of course, we have raised That's the true. demand. That's Many true. Many other associations have done so. Okay. But uh, the, the decision making is always slow at the government side. So CFR should be braced, uh, you know, for the coming times that yes, there will be no examination in the month of June as per my judgment. Okay. I don't see much uh, in the DG shipping surplus there for that. Okay, sir. That, that's actually very valuable information, but it's good that we have people like you who are still pushing for more centers. And I'm pretty sure you, you are already asking questions at your end. So at some point we'll have a response on your Twitter account regarding that so we'll keep our eyes open for that sir so for a younger generation of seafarers who are mainly the people who watch my channel is there any advice on the shore based opportunities post coming out at sea now we know seafaring and shipping is an industry where you're going to go from cadet to chief engineer or cadet to master at one point uh, the timeline may vary for every person but uh, there are a lot of people who would like to probably give back to the industry or explore the commercial side of the industry and since you have seen both ends and now you're on the front where you're giving back to the maritime industry what channels do we have what opportunities do we have as young seafarers once we become captains or chief engineers what can we do and what do you suggest is the future especially looking at the current growth in the indian seafaring market which fields do you suggest and recommend about 500 jobs are available every year for the seafarers whether they are masters chief engineers even for the other ranks who are there in merchant navy okay and uh, it is across the world i am saying so 500 new jobs happen every year but let me tell you okay what do you do out at sea whom you sail and how you have done the job on the ship i think every bit of information is available in the company right. where you go apply for because koi batchmate hai koi senior hai koi junior hai that's true when i got the job in midfield as can of course they did all my reference checks from the people i sailed with they go beyond the information what is available on the appraisal reports and all that so it's sort of informal information right. and vacancies you know more through your goodwill among your friends and among your colleagues okay so i think good people are uh, always there around the world you know who hold your hand and who help you to step ashore yes mere ko bhi ek hamare ad mishra sir hain hong kong mein wo superintendent abhi to kya he retired as uh, director in technical management company anglo eastern before that he was in univan he is the one who brought me ashore okay and he helped me to t- take up the job as a manning superintendent in the us line okay. but i think the most of the jobs will be now available for, for online things okay. for online tutorship then uh, of course the second number is your surveyors right in the pni club and all that i see very less uh, sea fellows okay. actually getting into that because the wages when you come out uh, from the sea and you want to take up a short job the wages are less so if at the right age you have not moved out i i don't think you can move out forever so i would say that if you are a master mechanic or a chief engineer the right age uh, you can move out on any age but as far as i'm concerned the right age is between 28 to 33 when your costs are low right. and your wife can manage your household expenses and your living style allows you to manage in whatever available income is there then of course after 5 6 years you know your salary goes pretty high and you can rise and you can do well yes, yes. for yourself and uh, for your family as well as uh, you know you help company to grow and you grow yourself yes you shift young basically that's what you would suggest so okay sir thank you so much for this sir is there anything else you want to add to indian seafarers it's it's been a fantastic opportunity mainly to talk to you and actually finally get to see you face to face it's really nice and not on your youtube channel i know you have a youtube channel we watch all your videos on that but this is something else altogether so if there's anything you would like to add to seafarers of today or future generation seafarers who watch my channel please this stage is yours but i would like to say three things firstly any seafarer dying because he had covid 19 symptoms or he died ashore within one year you can claim money from seafarers welfare 
welfare fund society okay. so as far as i am concerned i think all seafarers must know that if in their vicinity any seafarer family uh, is there and who have lost that seafarer who was on leave i think the compensation for uh, loss of life as expressia amount yeah. which is being given right. they should go ahead with that second one i want to mention to the seafarers is that when they are on a ship and they are facing the problems of sign on sign off and all that yes trust your company you may always feel company is lying but let me tell you nobody gets a pleasure through lying and trying to retain the seafarers That's true. you can always verify it through other quarters before you make your comments towards the company and i think you should hold on to your job that is my second bit of suggestion right. the third one is the, the seafarers who are cadets or what train us and who, who don't have job, job right now because of the situation where the crew changes are absolutely you know minimal and uh, That's true yes there yes. is there is still no hope as far as i am concerned everybody may not be able to get the job but i am sure the one who pursues sincerely yes at least the hope will make him go and review how i can get job and he has to just keep applying and pursuing right. the companies are bound to open pretty soon right and i think whether you get a job on a tugboat or you get a job on a you know 40 meter long boat they should not say sir mere ko iv jaag mil raha hai tug mil raha hai mera zindagi ka kya hoga ye sab baat nahi karna chahiye mujhe lagta hai job job hota hai yes and experience never goes waste so the first job what you get bhagwan ka shukriya ada karo unka shukriya ada karo jinhone aapko wahan tak pahunchaya so i think there will be jobs coming so don't lose hope these are my three messages for the seafarers thank you so much sir it's been a pleasure talking to you and i'm really really grateful that you actually took out the time with me today i will stay in touch and i will always keep following your youtube channel and twitter account all the information that you give us is extremely valuable so i would like to give you a massive thank you not only from me but from the entire seafaring community and everyone from my generation i, I, I thank you and your father please do convey my regards to him and i'm a big follower and a fan of yours thank you i'm sir. so happy that it was time able to interact with you thank you so much you're doing a wonderful job keep it up thank you sir have a good Jai. day and i will talk to you soon. Take care, sir. All right, you guys. That was the interview that I had with Captain Prasher. You guys have heard all about the vaccination drive, the future of seafarers in this country, the future job opening prospects, and what the Indian government is doing for seafarers and where the shipping industry is going in the near future. So definitely hit that subscribe button. Give this video a like if it helped you out and cleared your doubts. I'm leaving Captain Prasher's YouTube channel in the description as well as his Twitter profile in the description. He is always available, and I'm also putting up his mobile number right here for you guys so you can contact him directly. directly he is the perfect person to talk to if you have any doubts regarding the merchant navy in india and if you are somebody who is aspiring to join this industry if you want any advice definitely talk to captain prashad i hope you enjoyed this and i will be going back to see very very soon so things are definitely looking up stay tuned for more there's going to be a lot more of life at sea and tech reviews on this channel cuz that's what we do thanks for watching another video on my channel this is nitin chavla peace